welcome to all of you dear students this is the last lecture of unit 1 introduction to java and today's topic is buffer reader and scanner classes these two are the part of reading input from console so for reading input we are using these two classes that is buffer reader and scanner class so java api provide these classes so uh, one by one we are going to see both of these classes so let us focus on buffer reader this buffer reader class it uses the system dot in as a predefined stream object which can be used to read the input however this is the byte oriented stream that means what we can read only bytes to read the characters we should wrap this stream into a character oriented stream like input stream reader this lets us read characters if we want to read set uh, strings wrap this stream into class like buffer reader which buffers the characters we are using buffer reader for buffering the characters there are certain steps for uh, creation of object of buffer reader so we are going to see those steps into example which is given in the next slide the constructor of this buffer reader class accept the input stream object as a parameter and after successful creation of object of buffer reader we can make use of read and read line functions for reading the values say this is the example here first we have used the system dot in this predefined stream object which is used to read the input here it is passed this is passed to input stream reader this input stream reader wrap this byte stream into characters or character oriented stream so whenever we are reading values through system dot in this is the byte oriented stream those values are wrapped into character oriented stream or this stream is wrapped into character oriented stream into uh, using this input stream reader and then this input stream reader this is passed to this buffer reader now at run time the object of this input stream reader is created or the constructor is called so we are creating here the object of buffer reader name of that object is reader object so this reader object is created using this syntax first you have to pass the system dot in to input stream reader and this input stream reader is passed to buffer reader and then this object of buffer reader is created successfully now whenever we want to read the strings instead of only characters then we are wrapping this input stream reader into this buffer reader so first system dot in reads the bytes those are wrapped into characters using this input stream reader and these characters are wrapped into strings using buffer reader so this way we can make use of Uh, buffer reader for reading the values now here just object is created now next thing use that or uh, use that object for reading the values so how you can use here uh, there is a message enter your name after that you can read the name using this read line function and store the name in, into this variable name now read line method reads the strings were well, string values and to read the other type like integer or character float uh, these strings must be converted into those particular types 
using conversion methods. So on the next slide, those conversion methods are given. And for using the IO, you have to use the java.io. package. So here on next line, this age is uh, read and it is first converted into integer and then it is stored into this age variable. For that, we are again using read line function. Same for id. So this conversion function is compulsory needed because read line reads the value in string format and you want to store that value into integer format. For that, you have to use this conversion function. These are the conversion functions which we, which we can use for converting the values from one type to another type or whenever we are adding values into string value, string type for conversion of those string values into uh, particular type then we can use these functions like here integer dot parse int or long dot parse long float dot parse float double dot parse double short dot parse short byte dot parse byte these uh, functions we can use for conversion whenever we are reading value from uh, console using buffer reader using the function read line. The next class is scanner class. <coughs> this scanner class is also used for reading the values from the console and this scanner class is provided in the java.util package. Kindly note that for scanner, you need java.util package and for buffer reader, which class is needed? Java. Yes, IO. You need java.io package for buffer reader. So input can also be given to the program using this scanner class and uh, scanner breaks its input into tokens using delimiter pattern which by default matches white spaces. So white space is considered as delimiter. The resulting tokens may be converted into values of different types using various next methods. Those next methods are given on the next slide. So scanner uh, processes the input by tokenizing it using delimiter pattern. So these are the certain methods which are given by the scanner class for reading the values. So what are the methods? First one is next boolean. Its return type is boolean and it reads a boolean value from the user. For reading the byte value, we can make use of next byte function. For reading the double value, there is a function next double. For reading the float value, the function is next float. For reading integer value, the function is next int. For string value, there is a function next line. For long value, there is a function next long. For short value, there is a function next short. Or if uh, the another token it is already there for reading as input, then we can make use of this has next function to check whether it's there or not. So it returns true or false. Then this next string next, uh, it, it reads the complete next token. And next one, close function, it closes the scanner. So what is the difference between has next and next? Has next is used for checking if the scanner has next token for input. And Next is used to find and return the complete next token from this scanner. So we can use this scanner class functions for uh, reading the values. Let us see the example of scanner. As I said, you have to import java.util.star or java.util.scanner class then inside the my class there is a main function inside the main function you can create the object of scanner so scanner here object name is my obj and 
assigns to new scanner in bracket system dot in. So input stream object is created that is passed to scanner. That object is created at runtime. Then enter the username that username is stored into username variable using next line function and that is displayed using system dot out dot print so it's very simple to use the scanner class first you have to import the util package or scanner class from the util package then create the object of scanner class by passing system dot in and then using that object and built-in function next line or any other built-in function provided in the scanner class you can read the value store into that store it into that particular data type and then process that value here it is just display so there was only two topics for today that is buffer reader and scanner class and this is the end of the first unit so in first unit we have covered many topics just recall the topics what are the topics first introduction to java this is the unit and in that uh, basics of programming language and uh, introduction to java this we have covered in basics there was history features of java then jdk jre jit jvm these terms then naming convention and very simple java hello world program then in introduction to java we have studied the data types uh, various data types then how to declare the variable that is final and static then different types of the comments then arrays one dimensional two dimensional arrays then reading the values using different ways and from those different ways we covered two ways that is accepting input using command line argument and accepting input from the console using buffer reader and scanner class so this was the uh, unit one if you have any doubts in the unit one we can discuss those doubts in our live meet or in the google classroom thank you so much and have a nice day